everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. It's been a uh, pretty busy day yesterday. So apparently there were some pretty strong tornadoes. Of course, I was at work and I was unable to stream. So apologies for anyone that was looking for me. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out a way to make that work in the future. So that way we could at least partially stream it while at work. But it's kind of hard right now. But I'm working on a solution, rest assured. We do, however, still have an enhanced risk for severe weather today along this corridor just south of Cleveland here. So this threat is actually a tornado driven enhanced risk. There is not a hatch risk at this current time. And this is also a conditional threat here too. There are some things that leave this setup in doubt. Definitely in my eyes for sure as others as well. We also do have a slight risk over here further to the south where we have some morning storms ongoing over here towards Florida and Georgia. We do have a marginal risk that stretches all the way from the Florida Peninsula all the way up into the mid-Atlantic here. There is a brief chance of tornadoes and damaging winds there and then the hail threat is like I said before earlier in the week is kind of dropping off at this point. This will conclude this first long stretch of severe weather, but it looks like we'll have another one building after that. So again, stay tuned. Make sure you have that bell on. But this is our current picture right now. Here are our storms towards Florida. A few of these still could go severe as we get later into the morning, but that's going to be the apex of this threat, so to speak. And then as we get into this afternoon, of course, is when we'll expect more storms to fire over here towards the Ohio Valley. Now, the thing with the Ohio Valley, I've noticed two things that could hamper the event, so to speak. One is there is a good bit of cloud cover that's developing over here. You want to see more clearing in this area because with this setup, if you can get the moisture here, which I think we can, although there's been an interesting development with that as well, we get some daytime heating to go along with that, along with the kinematic setup which is going to be talked about in just a minute here we could get some pretty big storms to fire here now the thing with the moisture setup here an interesting little thing that i've noticed as this front's passing through here on the south flank here towards these storms towards florida and georgia you see this little yellow area here i'm going to set it into motion that's some dry air coming in with storm setups obviously you want moisture kind of like what you're seeing here and some of that moisture has snuck off just a little bit to the south of that Ohio Valley region here. Now it looks like we still get some moisture to come in here, but it does look like we may see some of that dry air try to undercut this little area of low pressure here. And you can see it based off the counterclockwise spin. This could also play a factor in today's severe weather setup over here. This also could a lot for some clearing too. So have to keep an extra close eye on this as we go throughout the day. Like I said, this is really going to determine whether or not I end up live streaming. If not, we'll be making a regular video because as I mentioned before, there's more days to talk about for sure. But this is a look at that set kinematic setup here. This is our trough. This has been our troublemaker the last few days. Then we have a little area that's popped up over here to coincide along with this trough as well. And as we continue to go forward here, these two troughs almost merge a little bit and then a surface low is going to pop up, I would say, right about here and push its way off to the north and east here. And this is what's going to a lot for our setup here if everything else can fall into place. This is going to be an early afternoon threat mainly over here towards the Ohio Valley, especially over towards Ohio. So I think maybe a little bit after lunchtime is when the storms will start to really take off over there. And then after that point, I would say by mid to late evening, we'll probably be done with this threat. and We'll get a little bit of a break here. But as a whole, looking at the severe threat, we do have a pretty good setup towards the upper levels and then towards the mid levels of the atmosphere what we're really looking for are these little ripples here in the isobars we're looking for what's called a short wave and i do see evidence of that like i said right around that lunchtime time frame here and we do see plenty of energy in the mid levels as well to coincide along with that so damaging wind and tornado threat definitely seems probable or it seems like the main hazard to say the least here 
we look at that low level jet we do look like we have pretty ample amounts as well especially towards the ohio pennsylvania border here so again going to be paying close attention to this area in particular like i said i don't expect this to be a long duration threat here but we'll have to see how things pan out it's conditional so we'll have to see if this threat even verifies at all we look at our moisture returns here's what we're seeing with the forecast here this is about the time that we're at right now currently and as we continue to go forward look at how we do eventually start to get that moisture it comes in just in time right for those storms to get going here this is that area of low pressure that i was talking about and on the eastern flank of that you always have to watch like I said, that's why I'm really thinking that the Ohio Pennsylvania border is going to be the area of interest over here, maybe towards Lake Toronto, Lake Erie. But of course, after that storm system leaves, we start to lose the parameters needed for severe weather here. Also, you can see a pretty similar deal going on with the temperature map here. Really, like I said, the real question to me right now, more so than anything else, is going to be those surface temperatures. I do see a little bit of advection to the north, but I see a little bit more favorability towards the east here, where we have slightly higher surface temperatures. The better the surface temperatures coinciding with those dew points, the better the lift will be and the more instability we might have available here. This isn't going to be a uh, high cape setup anyway to begin with, though, so there's questions with that. Now getting into our cloud cover here, this is a big concern in regards to the threat here. We do look like we get a couple of pockets to clear out here. It doesn't look like it's going to be for a long duration, but if we can get some sunlight to pop up in these areas, a severe threat may very well increase here. Of course, as we get later into the afternoon, cloud cover becomes more solid as that storm system begins to roll in. So like I said, it, it really is going to boil down to how our surface temps can develop because that's what's going to coincide with our instability here, our cape, so to speak. So as you can see here, values aren't going to be incredible. We could get up to about 1,000 joules per kilogram towards southern Ohio, and that's really all we'll need to get the storms to get going. It's just that there's not going to be a whole lot of fuel for these storms to use as far as continuing their life. So in regards to that, still questionable as to how things are going to pan out here. I do think that we have a chance at having maybe a couple of rounds here. But like I said, instability is rather limited at this current point in time here. Go ahead and even look at the surface instability here, or surface cape. And like I said, pretty similar deal here. The surface instability might be a little bit more rich towards the mixed layer, not quite as impressive. But even so, it should be sufficient enough to get a couple of storms to fire off here. And then, in regards to that significant tornado threat, like I said, no hatch risk with this. So, I, I'm not really expecting too much in the way of numbers here. Get some ones and get some twos there. But not to say that a strong tornado can't form, but it's a lot less likely than, let's say, yesterday. So the last thing we'll do is go ahead and take a look at our forecast model here. This is what our simulated radar could look like. Here are our storms towards Florida. This is going to be the first part of the afternoon here. Could be a few discrete cells, maybe even some water spouts offshore that make their way onshore. And then as we get into the back half of the morning, we'll see this roll out. And then we all eyes will then be on the Ohio Valley at that point. Not seeing really strong updrafts with this uh, storm system here, mainly due to the fact that whenever you get the really strong updrafts here on this radar mode, in particular that I'm in, you'll see some streaks pop up here. And you don't really see that in this case, so that is a potentially good sign. But of course, this can change. This model in particular updates every 45 minutes. So what we're seeing now could look entirely different within the next couple hours here. But that's pretty much just the general overview of what our storm system is looking like now. We'll still have to see how things pan out later today. So just make sure you keep that bell on. Make sure you hit that like button. If you're new around here, definitely consider subscribing and also hit that share button as well. Hope to stream this one. If not, you'll get a video this afternoon. Until then, you guys take care and have an awesome rest of your day. It's been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. I hope to see you. I will see you later today, one way or another.